Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. Tasmania is in the midst of a critical child safety worker shortage, with the union representing them saying it's never been so dire. Three quarters of positions in the northwest are vacant in the wake of the government shunning a vital funding opportunity. According to the union representing child safety workers, Tasmania's most vulnerable kids are at risk. There's about 45% of positions are vacant and that increases to 75% in the northwest. I'm not sure that it's ever been as difficult or dire as it is. The government's admitted it will miss the July 1 deadline for four Commission of Inquiry recommendations, including an urgent funding injection for out-of-home care. Of course there's been a huge amount of work that's been going on over the past months, a huge amount of work, and the funding for that will come through in the next budget. We need rivers of gold to flow into this system to address the inherent inequalities that are being experienced by children in the system right now. While every child is funded to have an individual caseworker, high vacancies mean many of the 900 children in care are currently being allocated to teams. The Children's Commission have found that model violates their rights. I think there is no doubt that children on the ground are impacted by low levels of workforce and an inability for them to have the contact with their guardian that they quite rightfully should be receiving. If the government is serious about acting on the Commission of Inquiry recommendations and supporting at-risk kids, then they need to make sure that we are attracting and retaining child safety workers. The Department of Education, Children and Young People was contacted for comment. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. A new vaping e-learning package is being introduced in Tasmanian schools, hoping to arm teachers with skills to help tackle and prevent the issue among students and combat any common misconceptions about e-cigarettes. We just don't want this in our schools. We do not want it for our young people and anything that we can do to assist our teachers will certainly do it. Well, the package is aimed mainly at grades 7 and 8. It can be used for older students. An audience member wielding a smashed glass has lashed out at protesters who interrupted a performance in Hobart's Playhouse Theatre. Pro-Palestine supporters unapologetic for disturbing the show. Jewish musician Deborah Conway and her husband play their autobiographical show to a full house in Hobart. But not everybody is there to enjoy the performance. Do you condemn Israel's war crime? Pro-Palestinian protest is interjecting multiple times. This is worth condemning. They say the motive isn't anti-Semitic, but spurred on by comments Conway made on ABC Radio last year, answering questions about the deaths of children in Gaza. But, but kids, lots of kids. I mean, we know they're not Hamas, right? Well, you know, it depends on what you what you call kids. But but you see, young people, you know, 16, 17 year old young boys toting rifles. Security escorting each protester from Saturday's show after each interruption. But one audience member can be seen taking matters into her own hands. <laughs> appearing to smash a glass and lunge towards one of the activists. <laughs> Despite the jeers from the audience, the group remains unapologetic, promising a continuous and uncompromising resistance. Nick Kelly, 7 Tasmania News. The 300 students at Exeter High School are just months away from enjoying flash new facilities as an $11 million revamp takes shape. The first stage to open will be the commercial kitchen in July. Preparing students, for example, for perhaps a future in industry uh, and having a flexi flexible benches that can be moved around and students working at those big benches like they would be if they were in industries. This school was actually founded in uh, 1985, so it's in need of a little bit of an upgrade, getting rid of some of the fluorescent green to looking at having state-of-the-art facilities. Flexible classrooms, breakout areas and a new courtyard will all be completed by next year. The future of Tasmania's AFL team is riding on the state having an adequate training facility. Many are agitated with the idea it could be located in local parklands, with one councillor suggesting an alternative location. 
A former golf course seemed to be a hole-in-one for Tasmania's AFL High Performance Centre. But some Clarence locals are adamant it's not a stroke of genius. They're not welcome here and the AFL needs to know that. The Save Rosney Parks community group says its members want the High Performance Centre in Clarence, just not at the parklands. On paper, it looks great, on paper. As soon as you start cutting and filling, digging into the ground, it's not great. More than 400 people attended a community meeting earlier this month, voicing objections to the centre being built on public land. Those concerns will be put forward to the council at tonight's meeting. It was uh, democracy in action. It was a segment of our community uh, who uh, wished to express a view. They did that. Um, at which they're entitled to do. Also tonight, another location is set to be fielded. Councillor James Walker wants to put forward Blunston Arena as an alternative site. This is already built, has a lot of infrastructure in place and is a perfect location. An option the Mayor says lacks substance. But at the end of the day, that's not something that is going to be seriously considered by the AFL or the Department of State Growth. And they're, they're the decision makers here. The High Performance Centre is a condition of Tasmania's bid to have an AFL team. It needs to be built and ready to go in two years, giving the AFL and VFL teams somewhere to call home before entering the league in 2028. We're determined to see uh, a team here in Tassie. In order to do that, we need a, we need a stadium, we need a High Performance Centre. Let's just get on and build it. Lily Thompson, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's longest serving mayor has died. Tony Foster led the Brighton Council for 28 years, spending six more as an elected member. Awarded an Order of Australia, he is remembered for accepting hundreds of refugees from Kosovo and leading the charge for the Brighton High School. A talented crew of seafarers will soon be setting off to Europe to compete for a prestigious world sailing title. The national team is made up entirely of University of Tasmania students and it's not the first time they've put themselves on the map. Many dream of sailing across Europe, but for these students, their trip will be more than a holiday. Well, there's a bit of nerve, but also a lot of excitement going on. We kind of here as a team have been working together for a couple of years now. And just kind of this is the pinnacle of it all. The team setting a course for the World University Championships in Italy next week. Crew members made up entirely of UTAS students representing Australia against 15 other countries. We've got quite a lot of sport at the university and it's great to see these students at sale not only in their university studies but in, in the sporting environment. It's not the first time they've tasted victory. The same team securing gold at nationals for the past two years. Their vessel, the Dolphin 81 class, perfect for a team of five, but they'll have to adapt quickly. This is uh, provided equipment, so we've never sailed them before, but no one has, apart from the Italians. So they've got a bit of a home field advantage. The crew fly out this weekend, but managed to squeeze in one last training session on the Derwent this morning. They say conditions out here may not be so different from Lake Garda, where they'll be competing. Sometimes Hobart's referred to as the garter of the south. It was cold, flat water, uh, some of these conditions we'll expect over in Italy. With hopes of returning back to Tassie victorious once again. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. Authorities are warning of the dangers of lithium-ion batteries in Tasmanian homes. Used in power tools and appliances in many households, they're a popular power source, but when they rupture, it can be catastrophic. A family home turned raging blaze, smoke pouring from the windows, flames bursting through the roof. Lithium-ion batteries are too often the culprit of devastating blazes like this. Two fatal house fires have claimed lives across our state this year alone. And we would expect to um, statistically see uh, another couple this season. Batteries and their dangers are now the focus of Tasmania Fire Service's latest statewide winter safety campaign. Tasmanians know about bushfire risk during the summer, but we need to know about the risks uh, that come uh, in the cooler months at home. The batteries are commonly found in household items, including electric vehicles, e-bikes, power tools and various other devices. Uh, when they're damaged, faulty, misused or overcharged, 
they can uh, combust, creating a uh, very intense fire that is difficult to control. Tasmanians are also being reminded to take simple steps in safeguarding their homes and loved ones as the temperature drops. Smoke alarms are the most effective means uh, for escaping a fire alive. Uh, we recommend smoke alarms are installed in every bedroom every hallway and above stairwells. The TFS says it responds to a house fire almost every day with candles, cooking and heating the most common cause of blazes. The TFS says Tasmania is tracking fairly average in terms of house fires this year but simple steps can save lives. Important measures that can help protect you, your family, your loved ones and your property over the winter months. Rebecca Gaydineros, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanians can expect another bill to rise, with Taswater announcing its prices will go up by 3.5% from July 1. It makes for an increase of 88 cents extra a week. The company saying it's well below inflation. Financial hardship help is available through Taswater Assist. Tasmanian high school students have reignited their inter-school rivalries, competing for the Science and Engineering Challenge title. The pick of this year's class battling for the chance to compete on the national stage as the sector hopes to inspire future careers. Putting their skills and their carefully crafted bridges to the ultimate test. One, The STEM brains trust of tomorrow pushing the limits, seeing which construction could withstand the weight and high stakes competition. Well, I've done the bridge on both days, so it's been good to uh, learn from the first day and then put it into practice. Tassie's top eight schools battling it out in the Science and Engineering Challenge Grand Final, picked to contend for the title after a competitive statewide search. It's a lot of people, a lot of schools, some we didn't even know existed <laughs> until today showcase our skills, learn new things and get to know people as well that are in the industry. Judges on the lookout for the complete package. The group work, um, good communication, um, really putting them in like a real world scenario where they've got to work in a team with limited resources. With just 25% of students graduating from STEM degrees, the event is hoping to lure more bright minds into the sector. They're just like fun and good ways to try new things and really narrow down what I'm interested in. So to get them to see that it's not just your physics and chemistry and maths, it's a lot more to that um, and hopefully this will you know, open up their eyes into the future world of STEM. Victoria Risto, 7 Tasmania News. A King River veteran has shown his experience playing a leading role in his side's impressive comeback victory against Launceston. Will Clifford notching up 30 disposals and 7 tackles in the one-point thriller. And with just seconds remaining, the 200-game senior set up a play from the back line for second gamer Ryan Bradburn to kick this goal for the ages right on the siren. We were just trailing the whole way, but then we just stuck to the process. And, yeah, we always have faith in that and we just got the job done, which was good. He's now looking for a spot in the Tasmanian men's representative squad. And it's no surprise Will Clifford is the three-point taker from that nail-biter against the Blues in the Crips Player of the Year. Brad Cox Gidger gets his second three-point vote of the season from the Northern Bombers win over Lauderdale. A second-time three-pointer as well in Glenorchy's Harrison Gunther after keeping the Demons winless. A third Paralympics is within arm's reach for Devonport runner Dion Kenzie, but he has a nervous weight, missing automatic qualification in the 1500 metres after taking bronze at the World Para Athletics Championships in Japan. Leading the whole race, he was blitzed by Tunisian Armin Tasui after the final bell, who finished well ahead of the pack. Tasmanian Tiger Bo Webster has just had the best innings of his career, but he's done it over in England, playing county cricket for Gloucestershire. Webster taking six wickets for 100 runs with four maiden overs against Derbyshire. One of those wickets thanks to a catch from fellow Aussie Cameron Bancroft. Northwest rider Jed Beaton hasn't been able to recover his lead in the Pro MX standings after finishing second behind a former teammate Kyle Webster in the fourth round in Maitland. Just a single point splits the pair with a 26-point buffer to third. 
Good evening, Hobart, Launceston and Burnie all 17 degrees today. Devonport reached 16. Fingal shared the overnight low of minus one with Cressy and Lyawini and also shared our high today of 18 with Friendly Beaches. St Helens, Grove, Bushy Park and the Islands all 17. Smithton and Low Head 16. Strawn reached 15 degrees. Now after a few showers crossed overnight today under this more scattered cloud pattern, no rain of any note was reported over Tasmania. There is low cloud sitting over southwest WA and along the Queensland coast and convective and high cloud over the north of the country. A large high pressure system has ridges over the mainland with a series of cold fronts moving across the southern waters tomorrow. We'll have west northwesterly winds at 15 to 25 knots. They'll reach 30 knots over the west and south. Swells to three and a half metres. Strong wind warning, that's from Cape Portland to eastern Flinders Island and also from Tasman Island to Sandy Cape. Hobart for Tuesday, 16 with a shower or two, a shower for Adventure Bay, 15 the maximum and 14 the top for Taralea. Launceston, fine but partly cloudy, 19 the high, 18 for Devonport, bit cloudy for Bridport and 17 the maximum. 18 the top for Burnie and partly cloudy, a few showers for Strawn, 16 and 17 the top for Marawar and cloudy down the east coast. St Helens 19, 17 for Swansea and Whitemark, partly cloudy, 18 degrees. On Wednesday, a fine mostly sunny day across all of the state as temperatures push towards 20. Whitemark and Launceston actually expecting 20 degrees on Thursday as fine conditions give way to showers later in the day and the rain continues into Friday before contracting to the west in the afternoon. Showers for Perth tomorrow, sunny weather for Adelaide, Melbourne and Sydney, a possible shower for Brisbane, 24 degrees there and sunny and a top of 33 in Darwin. Partly cloudy at the moment in Hobart, 13, Launceston 12 and currently in Devonport 11 degrees. Hope your weekend was good, Kim. Mine was a bit rough uh, and I've got a warning to those people that stole my bed. I'm not going to rest until I find you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you, man. It's terrible for a Monday. And that is all your news for now. We'll have news breaks throughout the night. But for now, on behalf of the team, good night.